Okay, so the main goal of the modulation oscillator is really to modulate the complex oscillator to make it even more complex. So uh, there is a facility for doing that right here, the modulation section. You have a modulation slider. You also have a modulation control, which tells, which allows you to decide which form of modulation is happening. So if we bring in the uh, output of the complex oscillator, we can bring up the modulation and uh, let's see, it's set to saw so, and it's set to low. That's important. It makes a difference. Obviously, low range is going to get low frequency oscillation and switch it into high and it's audio range oscillation. Let's hear low first. Uh, there's also amplitude. Oh, let's listen to the triangle. There's also amplitude modulation of the complex oscillator by the modulation oscillator. And of course, we could put it into the high range, so these would be all audio range oscillations, which are very fast and sort of ring mod-like. Okay, we also have the ability to, if we have something plugged into the preamp section, uh, we can switch this up to allow the preamp in, and then whatever is going into the preamp, when you have this set to balanced external, uh, you will get uh, ring modulation. You'll get the sum and differences of uh, whatever is plugged into the preamp. So let's have a listen to that. playing notes on the micro freak which is what i have plugged in there but you can hear the ring mod effect <laughs> So those, that is how the modulation section of the modulation oscillator works. But in general, if we were just going to use the modulation oscillator as an oscillator, we have several different waveforms. Here's the sawtooth wave. square wave and a triangle wave So those are our waveforms. We also have a fine tune. I don't think I mentioned the fine tune in the complex oscillator when I was talking about it, but it's the same thing. Uh, the switch that allows you to switch from a high range to a low frequency range, 
which means that no sound's going to come out, but we'll uh, demonstrate it when we get up to this output section. Uh, you also have the ability to switch off the keyboard and then whatever is being input into the MIDI, into the CV inputs or into the Buchla inputs on the easel command uh, will not respond. And this is just a free running oscillator set to whatever frequency you set it to, which is great if you're using it as an LFO or a modulation source. So uh, we also have a modulation oscillator output. It's an audio output, a tiny jack there. We have the FM in, so if you want an external uh, frequency modulation source for the modulation oscillator, things get wacky then, especially when the modulation oscillator is already modulating the complex oscillator. Uh, you have an input here for that. And if you would like to use the modulation oscillator as a modulation source other than going to the complex oscillator, then you can certainly do that just of course you wouldn't do it this way but i'm going to demonstrate it this way just because it's quick uh, we'll take the modulation out we'll put it into the pitch of the complex oscillator So those are functionalities, of course, you get with the modulation output directed directly to the complex oscillator. But right here, I'm just demonstrating that the modulation, the modulation oscillator output can be used to uh, modulate a variety of other sources. Of course, if you would like to modulate the modulation oscillator, any of our colored outputs in the jack field could uh, direct be directed to control the frequency, for example. So you have that functionality, of course, as well. And that is our modulation oscillator. Keep in mind, remember that the modulation oscillator's output is directed to gate two and controlled with the channel B knob up here. All right, that's the modulation oscillator. <laughs>